In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom cursor that animates when you click it and changes when it hovers over something. This is really helpful um, functionality for games that are point and click when you have an item on the screen that uh, is interactable and you want your cursor to change depending on that. Okay, so I'm going to start with ActionScript 3.0. Now I've already made some art for this, so I'm going to import it to my library. I have three different images for my wand, which I'm going to use to represent my cursor, and then I have this doofy looking little frog guy. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to do is my wand is going to look like this, but a little sharper uh, when I move it around. And when I click on something, it's going to flash back and forth between this for a little, uh, pretty quickly, but it'll flash back and forth between that. And then when I hover over the frog, it's going to look like this. Okay, so let me put the frog in the scene. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is notice that he is a bitmat, and you can't really do any code that interacts with a bitmat, so I need to convert him to a movie clip. So I'm going to right click him, convert to symbol, and let's call it frog. And make sure it says movie clip. The registration point isn't really important in this case. Okay. Now I want to give him an instance name. Right now I have this frog movie clip that I can drag and drop as many times as I want. And each one of these would need their own instance name. Okay, I'm just going to do one. So I'm going to name him frog underscore M -E M C. Generally you want to give movie clips an underscore of MC so that when you put them in the code, it's obvious what they are. Okay. Now I'm going to make the animation for the cursor. To do this, I am going to first insert a new symbol and I'm going to call it mm, wand. Okay. So now I'm on a new screen and this is the screen of this wand movie clip that has nothing in it. So I'm going to actually put the images of the um, the wand in there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label this one wand, make another layer, label it actions and another layer and label it labels. Okay, so I want the wand to look like this cursor one when it's doing nothing so I'm going to slide it in and then I'm going to center it at zero zero by going to the properties panel. Well, I'm sorry, not center it, um, position it at zero zero. Okay, oops, and I put that in the wrong f layer. Let me put it in the right layer. Okay, properties zero zero. Okay, so now I have my little wand here. So um, if I didn't do anything else. This is just what my wand would always look like, whether or, or my cursor would always look like if I was going to click and stuff. But I want to add a little bit more to it. I also want to label this. I'm going to label this uh, static. Okay. So let's now do the flashing animation. So I want it to flash between these two things. And I don't want to do it very long. I just want to do it for a few seconds. So uh, let's do insert um, let's insert a blank keyframe here and then I'll go ahead and put this in and center it at zero zero and let's just make sure that they yeah they're pixel perfect okay so I want it to look like this for maybe three frames and then look like it without the little sparkles for three frames so let's insert a keyframe one, two, three, insert a keyframe. Oops. Insert keyframe. Insert keyframe. So that would be on, off, on. And then insert frame. Okay. So right now it doesn't really look like it's doing anything. And that's because I need to go and every other one remove that. And then put in the one with no sparkles. So go to zero, zero, and 
zero zero. Okay, so now you can see it. It sparkles. So I also need to extend the frames here for these. So I'm going to insert a blank keyframe, insert a blank keyframe, and then insert frames. Okay, these don't need to have little breaks for each one. They should actually cover the entire animation. They should go all the way across. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and label this sparkle. All right. And now let's go ahead and insert one more blank. Oops. Insert one more blank keyframe. Go ahead and do it all the way across. And now I'm going to drag and drop the pink one in. Center it at zero zero, or position it at zero zero, and label this frame pink. Okay. So now I'm almost all set up. I need to also put in some code here. I need to stop at this one so that it won't run through the animation because right now if I press enter that's what the cursor would just always look like it would keep going like that so I need to put a stop here oops go to actions stop and that'll make it so that it's always looking like this until I tell it to look otherwise okay and then I should put a stop here as well That way it'll look like this for as long as I tell it to. Okay, And lastly, you want to put a stop on this last frame here. Oh, actually, sorry. Let me erase that. I need to put it on the last frame of this sparkle animation, so I do need to add another little blank keyframe right here. Insert blank keyframe and tell it to stop. That way it'll run through this animation and then it'll stop right here and it won't like go to the pink. Okay. Um, notice also that the last piece in this little animation under the sparkle here, I made it look just like the regular cursor so that if it does stop on this it won't really mess me up. Okay. Alright, so we got everything set up for animation. Let me go ahead and save it. Okay, so now I just need to get my cursor in here. So I am going to use the snippets. Okay, so I am going to first need to move my movie clip into the frame, the, um, into the stage. This is the movie clip that is going to replace my cursor. Okay, because if you notice when I run the game or whatever you want to call this. Um, I just have this little white cursor. It doesn't do anything and that guy's just sitting there. Okay. So before I can start adding code to it, I need to give this an instance name. Let's just call it wand movie clip. Okay. So click on this and then do code snippet. And this isn't necessarily the best way to do this. Um, some of the code is going to be a little chunky by using these code snippets, but it does work. So I'm going to double click custom mouse cursor. Okay. And do, do, do. it gives you all this different information. I'm going to delete that. So notice it added the wand to the stage. Okay. And then it said, hey, look at the wand. When we enter the frame, essentially make the wand be where the mouse is and hide the mouse. Okay. So if we run it now, notice now I have this cute little cursor. It doesn't animate or anything, but I do have one. Okay. So now that I've gotten that, let's make it sparkle when I click it. Okay. So if you remember from the movie click clip, I can click on it. I can see that I called it sparkle. Okay, that is the animation for sparkling. Okay, so let's go back to the scene. So I want that to happen when I click the button. So I'm going to use code snippet again and I am going to choose the, was it action? Oh, no, it's in the event handlers. Okay. Mouse click event. Okay, so 
The problem with this is this actually needs to say stage instead of one movie clip. Okay. So if you run it, um, right now it's not going to do any animation, but notice it does have this trace here. So when you click, notice down here it says, hey, you clicked the mouse. Okay. So I don't want it to just say that. I want it to actually go to that animation. So the way I'm going to do this is I called it wand MC, right? I'm going to do wand underscore MC dot go to and play sparkle. Oops, close my parenthesis, semicolon. So Woohoo! And notice it only does it for those uh, few frames that I made the animation go for. Okay, so now it clicks. Now I want it to turn pink when I hover over the frog. Okay, I'm going to use code snippets again. So this time I'm going to use the mouse over code snippet. Oops, I gotta select the frog first. So I want this to change when I mouse over this. So I need to click select him and then mouse over event. And I can delete most of this stuff. Okay. Now I haven't done anything. I've just put the uh, the code in that it gave me. And it does have a trace function already in it. So let's see what happens. So notice when I go over the frog, it says mouse over down here. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So I don't want it to just say mouse over. I want it to also turn pink. So I am going to do pretty much the same thing I did up here. So if you want, you can copy and paste this. Maybe let's delete this and your custom code crap. Okay. And change this to pink because I'm pretty sure that's what I called it. Now the problem with this is it's going to turn pink and it's going to stay pink. So click, it does that, turns pink, but it stayed pink. Eww. So I got this mouse over and then it doesn't go away until I do it again. Okay, so this is a problem. So the way I fix that is mouse over is when the mouse is on it and then there is mouse out when the mouse leaves it. So when the mouse is over it, I want it to turn pink. And when the mouse is out, I want it to go back to its original thing. So I am going to select the frog again. Code snippet, mouse out. Delete all this extraneous stuff. Okay. And let's just watch what happens to the trace. Let me clear this. To clear all this, you can do um, right click it and do clear. Let's just see what happens. Pink. Mouse out, over, out, over, out, over, out. Okay, so when it goes out, I want it to go back to the original frame, which I called static. So I'm going to copy this, and then static. Pretty sure that's what I called it. Pink, woo! Okay, so it's not the most elegant. Um, code but it works and so that's nice. Um, it's also really easy. You don't have to memorize anything. You just use these. Um, the one thing that you have to change is you have to change this to stage or it won't work. Um, let's see. You can also do this with a bunch of different items um, a, like a bunch of different frogs but instead of doing frog MC you'd probably want to do an array or something like that. Um, but yeah this is really good especially for point and clicks where you want um, you have a bunch of items and you want the cursor to change when it's over something that's clickable. Okay, that's it. Thank you.